What's up everyone, Alex here. In this video, I'm going to give you my first impressions of Neo: The World Ends With You after at least 10 hours of playtime. In particular, I want to answer the question of whether or not this game would be perfect for newcomers to the series. Because if you are a longtime fan already, chances are you've either gotten the game, you've beat the game, you're playing through the game, or you have it on your wish list. So there's nothing that I'm going to say here that's going to change your mind. But for newcomers, I know that this is a very interesting looking game and I want to deliver my perspective on it after playing it for so long. All that out of the way, let's just get right into it. Early conversations about Neo The World Ends With You's gameplay revolved around the fact that it seemed very button mashy. After all, a lot of the early battles kind of allowed you to do that and just hand you the victory. At first, it doesn't seem too satisfying. After all, like nobody really wants easy battles in any sort of RPG, unless you're grinding and whatnot. However, later on in the game, it does unlock harder difficulty levels that will challenge your usage of your abilities. Now, each ability is tied to a specific pin, which can be worn by any of your party members. And each pin is activated by pressing a corresponding button, whether it's L1, square, triangle, or R1. And you can't really mash the buttons forever, because once you deplete that particular pin's ability, you'll be given a countdown timer that'll force you to wait until that ability is available. The key to Neo's gameplay is all about balancing when to use each ability in order to maximize the amount of damage that you have so that you can defeat enemies in a quick fashion. In fact, two specific stats are very important when it comes to scoring, which is the amount of damage that you've accumulated and, of course, the amount of time that it took you to defeat enemies. And to me, that was like the most interesting part about Neo's gameplay, is this goal to find synergy between different pins. Now, based on my experience, there's two particular attributes of pins that you need to pay attention to, which is there are pins that will deliver knockback, and there are abilities that offer stun. And this kind of reminds me of other RPGs that have build-based systems, but done in a very compact way. At the point I am in the game, you're really dealing with four different abilities, and that's where I find enjoyment in the game. Of course, there's also like a gear piece to this, where you can buy outfits from different brands and stuff like that, which is really cool in and of itself. And those abilities kind of complement what you have going as far as your pin builds are concerned. That being said, I'm having a difficult time trying to up my character's style, which unlocks a lot of these passive abilities from these clothes and gear and stuff like that. So if you have any ideas on how to do that apart from eating food, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to get some advice from you guys who have either finished the game or are playing through it. In the section that I'm at in the game, I did find it a bit tricky to target specific enemies. And the reason why you want to be proficient at this is because sometimes you'll find that certain party members get encroached upon by enemies and they're pinned down. And what you want to do is you want to free them or else they'll just chip away at your team HP. Speaking of which, that might take a little bit of getting used to because you don't really see individual HP for the characters, at least where I'm at. You only see like a general team HP that's displayed on the top left corner of the screen. That being said, I do find that a really good indication of how well you're doing in battle. If your health is pretty low, then that means you need to kind of be a lot more careful of how you choose to invoke pin abilities and to try to vary your strategy. Certainly at the hard difficulty at around level 22, I'm facing level 19 enemies right now, button mashing stops becoming viable unless you have it at a lower difficulty level. But I do find it interesting that the aspect of collecting in Neo is so addicting and so much fun actually that I want to eat every single meal, I want to buy all the clothes even though I don't really have any sort of use for them, and I also want to collect all the pins. In fact, like there's actually a whole page that shows you every single thing that you can collect in the game, and to me that's actually really cool. Honestly, the tutorial collecting, I don't really know if that's beneficial. Again, let me know in the comments if you have played through the game, but otherwise, I'm collecting everything else, and I'm having a blast doing that. 
In terms of the story, it is a slow burn, meaning there's not much forward momentum when it comes to the plot progression at this point in the game. I'm in day four right now, going on to day five, and a lot of characters are still being introduced. So if you're the kind of person who likes plots that perpetually move forward at every juncture, you might feel that the game is a bit too slow in that regard. That being said, I love all the characters that I've met, and I'm not even talking about the characters that are part of the main story. There's also secondary characters that you meet through side quests or even just supporting their businesses, whether it's a clothing line or even a food store or Tower Records. Remember those? And this is all tied together with a social network that is less of a tech tree, but more along the lines of like a place where you can unlock passive abilities and skills that will probably help you later down the line. I absolutely love the synergy between interacting with the characters in the game and this social network, and how that affects the gameplay during battles, and also like how the progression is affected. In fact, the social network actually unlocks the difficulty levels, which is kind of strange, but I've kind of liked it because it feels like you are being rewarded for playing the game, and I think that's kind of the most important part of Neo to me. There's also a lot of returning characters, but I have to be honest, the original game was released in 2008, which is more than a decade ago at this point. And frankly, I haven't touched a game recently, and I don't quite remember much of it outside of really liking the presentation and the music. This is all to say that I'm sort of playing Neo as though it's my first time with the series. And given that so far, I haven't really cared about the relevance of any returning characters in the story, newcomers should be fine jumping into this one without any prior knowledge. Speaking of, Neo has a pretty minimal presentation when you compare it to other RPGs that have lavishly rendered cutscenes, but I wouldn't call it minimalistic. And I really do love the graffiti-inspired aspect of both its dialogue scenes and the world and its menus. They even go so far as to give you your own graffiti board so you can post your achievements on it. And I thought that was actually a really cool way to not only honor its inspiration, but also to kind of let you play around with that kind of art style in a very simple way. With regards to the music, I absolutely love it. It has the same edge that the original had, and I just love the different pastiche of styles that's being mixed here. There's rock, there's pop, there's electronica. It is so, so good. I've always loved the World Ends With You soundtrack because it's so different, but this one kind of takes that idea to the next level, and it might be one of my favorite soundtracks of the year for a very different reason than what I've identified in games that I've covered on this channel. I also would like to point out that Neo's director is Hiroyuki Ito, who is best known for directing Final Fantasy VI alongside Yoshinori Kitase, Final Fantasy IX, and of course he finished Final Fantasy XII for Yasumi Matsuno. Ito also served as a designer in the previous game, and honestly, after knowing his involvement, I kind of see where Hiroyuki Ito's strengths are as a director. He's the kind of person who can help execute a vision, and he can close out and really help realize Neo's package, so to speak, like what the entire piece is all about. And this is all to say that, to me, when you consider everything that I've said about Neo The World Ends With You, it tries to bend classical build-based elements of other RPGs with the modernity and the commercialism of what setting a game in Shibuya is all about. Shibuya is kind of the heart of Tokyo's fashion and youth, and it makes a lot of sense that a lot of its gameplay elements kind of revolve around that. Now, that being said, it kind of comes in conflict with the Reapers game and the idea behind it, but I think that's a stylistic choice that I'm able to forgive, particularly because of what the game actually delivers from a gameplay standpoint. And who knows, I might be just a few chapters away from when the story actually starts ramping up. And I keep wanting to talk about the gameplay because I really love it. This might sound strange to y'all, but like, I feel like the way that they designed the gameplay of Neo is kind of like saying, let's take what a traditional action RPG plays and kind of make it stylish and make it feel really good. And I can only compare that to something like, <laughs> and this is going to sound really wild, playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Especially if you actually got really good at those kinds of games, it feels like that there's a flow to them that you can really love and appreciate and embrace. And that's how I personally feel about the gameplay of Neo The World Ends With You. 
All right, enough gushing about the gameplay. I do love my experience with Neo as well, and I cannot wait to finish it. In fact, I'm probably going back to it as soon as I finish with this video. But if you are new to the series and or you are a longtime fan, you finished it, you're playing through it, you haven't played through it yet, let me know in the comments below what you think of this game and post them all in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think of it. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you in the next video.